In this video, we're going to compute for covariance and correlation, two extremely important measures in um, the investment industry in portfolio management. Now, the question we're going to solve is the same one or the same setup as you've seen before. It's the same numbers, two assets which are included in a portfolio uh, with certain weights their returns on one asset on one side up here we've got the possible returns on asset b and the joint probabilities in the middle now in the previous two questions we've already solved for the expected return on respectively asset a and asset b and also the standard deviation of asset a and standard uh, asset b uh, and i've got these written down here because they're going to be absolutely important from the point of view of computing correlation and covariance, which is what we're asked in uh, before in this question. So, you know, if it's something you want to get right, do keep watching and let's get solving. Good. The uh, covariance, which we're asked for initially here. So let me write this down, covariance, and provide you with a formula for it. So cov and it's going to be the covariance between the returns of one asset and uh, the returns on a second asset, asset B. This is uh, going to be the extent to which two variables move together. It's going to provide us a measure of the extent to which two variables co-vary or move together. And the way to compute this is... Uh, with um, with data provided in such a table is to say it's the expected value from the following and in the sort of in the middle of my table I'm going to have the um, open another bracket actually the return and so perhaps make this one squared the return on our asset a minus its expected return good multiplied by the return on asset B minus its expected return and close this bracket and close the square bracket. Good. I think this is fine. And um, how is this going to work with actual values? Well, what we'll need to do is take the values taken on by A and at the same taken on by, uh, by B and bear in mind what the probability of that set of returns occurring actually is. So in the first in instance, with a probability of 30%, hence 0 0.3, and that, that kind of deals with the expected idea because we're going to weigh everything by the relevant probability of it occurring. We've got a situation in which asset A takes on a value of 0 0.1, that's the return of A, minus its expected return, which is 0 0.49, obviously multiplied by the fact that at the same time, B is taken on a value of minus 1.3, and we deduct its expected return, which was 2.37. If this was a formula for variance, which is something we did in a previous question, we would do it just with respect to one variable and we would square the result. Here there is no squaring, but we've got two sets of data coming from two different variables. And as a result, what comes out is going to be expressed in percentages squared anyway. So this is a percentage value, this is a percentage value, and multiplying one by the other results in percent squared. To this, we're going to... Uh, naturally add the second set of values. Now, B taking on a value of 2.4, A taking on a value of 0 0.4, and this happening with a joint probability of 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 times, let's start with A, 0 0.4 minus 0 0.49, its expected return, multiplied by the value simultaneously taken on by B, that's 2.4 and minus 2.37. And obviously in this question, we've only got three possible combinations of the two, uh, which is not very realistic, but you know, from the point of view of the CFA exam, how much more can you be asked to solve? 0 0.2 is our final probability here. 
And with this probability, we've got the following event. A taking on a value of 1.3, um, obviously minus its expected return. And at the same time, B taking on a value of 2.4. No, not 2.4, sorry, 7.8 over here. 7.8 minus the same constant expected value, which is 2.37. And um, covariance is going to be whatever comes out from this... Um, from these, uh, from adding all of these up. So um, let's have a go on the calculator. Let's see if we can do this simply in one go. So 0 0.3 multiplied by open bracket 0 0.1 minus 0 0.49 close bracket. And this is still multiplied by open bracket 1.3 negative minus 2.37 close bracket. Okay. And now I'm going to hit the plus sign. Um, to begin the next row of computations. 0 0.5 times open bracket 0 0.4 minus 0 0.49, um, close the bracket, and multiplied by open bracket 2.4 minus 2.37, close bracket, add 0 0.2 times, um, once again, open bracket 1.3 minus 0 0.49, close bracket, and multiply by open bracket 7.8 <laughs> minus 2.37 close bracket hit enter and I can see a result of 1.3077 so kind of the sum of all this is 1.3077 and this is indeed the covariance um, in this uh, in this probe in this problem and if you um, look back at the possible answers to this uh, question, you can um, immediately see that this result corresponds very nicely with answer C, doesn't it? 1.308 uh, for covariance, and we could have solved this question right here, right now, but obviously we're going to compute correlation as well. Um, let me just tell you that covariance is um, expressed in units squared, so percentages squared, and it does tell us something about the extent to which uh, two variables, in this case the returns of A and returns of B, co-vary or move together. If the covariance between two variables is positive, as it is in this case, what that basically means is that when one of the variables, A, seems to be above its expected value above its average, then the other also seems to be above its expected or average value. So the way to get positive variance is to have a situation where the two brackets which make up, you know, the, the values from the two brackets which make up this uh, whole computation, they tend to be on the same side of their relative means or expected values. So when one is positive, the other is positive. When one is negative, the other is negative, in which case you you you, you generate still a, a result of the multiplication, which is a positive one. You would get a negative covariance when the signs coming from the two brackets tend to be overall different, meaning that when one variable is generally below its mean or its expected value, the other is positive and vice versa. And if you've got a covariance which is zero, there doesn't seem to be any meaningful relationship that we can explore between the two variables or they are, you know, simply unrelated. Okay, this is not a question which explores the properties of covariance, but just be aware of what I literally just said. However, we want to do an exploration of the correlation coefficient. Now, correlation between um, two variables, in this case, it's going to be uh, the correlation between the returns of A and returns of B. Uh, I'm going to write out the formula in just a moment, but just be aware of the fact that correlation is like a standardized covariance. One of the problems with covariance is that it is really difficult to interpret. First of all, in this case, it's expressed in something like percentages squared, and that's the same problem as you've, as you've got with variance. It's difficult to work with percentages squared, plus 
it's difficult to say anything about the size of the covariance um, and its impact on the strength of the relationship. Now, what correlation will do is turn a, very, uh, a measure which is difficult to work with into one which is really easy to interpret. And correlation is computed as the covariance between these two returns, A and B, divided by the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B. This is the standardiz standardization element. So a really simple computation, given that we've already got covariance over here and we've got the standard deviations computed in prior questions. If we plug these numbers into um, our uh, you know, uh, formula here, we get the 1.3077 coming from covariance. And I'm actually going to input the signs as well this time because I want you to be aware of something very interesting which happens here. Covariance was expressed in percentages squared, whereas standard deviations alone are expressed always in uh, just simply the units which we are actually expressing the variable in. So this is in percent, 0.4253 percent multiplied by 3.15 percent and uh, it's very easy to notice that as a result of having percent squared here and percent times percent in the denominator of the fraction you're actually going to get units which cancel each other out so correlation will be expressed without any units as such let's do the relevant computation on the calculator 1.3077 which is what I've got already from the computation of covariance, divide this by open bracket 0 0.4253 multiplied by 3.1525, close bracket. Okay, it gives a result of 0 0.975. Great. And that once again corresponds very nicely with uh, answer C to this problem, which has uh, the right level of covariance and the right level of correlation. Now, in terms of the correlation properties, you should know that correlation is bounded from the downside and upside as minus one and plus one, where plus one, which is we're very close to plus one, points to almost a, well, it, this is almost, but if it were plus one, that would be a perfectly positive correlation, meaning a perfect li linear relationship between the two variables. Negative one would be a perfectly negative correlation, but once again, it's a negative linear relationship. If zero, then there doesn't seem to be a linear relationship um, as such. This was a question about the computation of covariance and correlations and correlation, but I will have questions which get us to interpret the size of these, uh, especially the correlation coefficient. So for now, I'm going to leave it as it is.